We are really finally finished with furnishing, decorating, designing our basement. Almost. Almost. We got one more <laughs> left. There's some debate in our household as to whether or not we're going to do this downstairs bedroom. That has yet to be determined. But it will, if we do it, it probably will not, it will be like after the summer. Maybe this fall we'll think about it. Yeah, okay. we'll see. This has been a year in the making. It's literally been almost a year, right? Since yeah. we started this. Mm -hmm. So as I was going through this, looking at the great work our contractor did, looking at all the blood, sweat, and tears we put in this project, mm -hmm. I started thinking about in this basement, yeah. there's a really good mix of what I would call splurges and steels that we use to make it come together, mm -hmm. right? So when I say something was a steel in this basement, it is really something that we designed or decorated in this basement. And it's something that wasn't necessarily free. I don't want you guys to think steel means free because some of this stuff did cost a good bit of money. But we put some of our blood, sweat, tears, talent into it to make it more affordable. And a lot of things that I would call more splurges mm -hmm. where we just went out and said, you know what? That looks nice. Let's just buy it, right? Let's just do it. So let's start our tour here in the craft room. What's a splurge? A splurge mm -hmm. might be the light. Oh. All right. I've said this before, lighting is one of those ways. It's a splurge, but it's an inexpensive splurge. And unfortunately, you know, when you have your lights on, you really don't get yeah. the full effect of how the lighting is. But okay, that's a nice little yeah. shot of it there. Okay. So when you want to redo a room or freshen up a room, lighting is a way that you can spend a little bit of money mm -hmm. and, you know, actually install it yourself and give your room a totally different look. So mm -hmm. we made sure when we got this basement done, we weren't going to do anything builder grade. We did upgraded lighting everywhere. And this is just one example. So the next thing we're going to talk about is a steel. And the steel we're going to talk about is really this entire crash room. Okay. Now we bought a lot of stuff from Ikea. I'm not going to lie. This, this cost a little bit of money, but when you look at the cost of building this out ourselves with Ikea furniture and shelving versus paying a California closet or a professional closet installer to do it, it was relatively inexpensive. The only thing in here furniture wise that was really a splurge was the uh, bench here from Z Gallery, which we just had to have because it fit perfectly up against the wall here. Right, so the next area we are going to focus on is our fireplace mantle and shelving. I would say the majority of this area was a splurge, getting the fireplace around custom built, getting the uh, shelving custom built. We got the TVs professionally mounted. Um, that was a bit of a splurge from Geek Squad. I was a little bit nervous about mounting TVs and, and dropping them, so that was a splurge. The steel, which is a, an idea my wife came up with, we had a lot of old books laying around, as I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, and so we didn't mind having a few books out, but we also wanted a little bit of uniformity. So it was your idea, babe, to gift wrap these and just white gift wrap. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives it a nice uniform look. Yeah, I think a nice clean look. So the next area we're going to talk about is this gallery wall. Uh, we did a video about this, I think a couple of months ago. Basically what we did was we went to uh, Michael's bought these poster frames, actually ended up uh, buying some poster boards as the backing and glued uh, these black and white printouts to the frames. And these are just, again, pictures we had on our computer, just stuff that we had easily available to us that we could decorate with. Um, and this created a really nice effect. So again, this wasn't free, right? You know, these frames were uh, a little bit more upscale. These aren't the typical thin poster frames that you would see. So we spent a little bit of money on the frames, but if you compare what these frames and these printouts cost versus what pictures of this size will cost in the store, big cost savings. So three tremendous steals we're going to talk about are all from Goodwill. So let's start with the first one. This credenza. Now, if you watch the Unprofitable Mommy Life, you know that my wife will thrill. She will go to Goodwill and fight <laughs> somebody to find something, a, a nice thrifted piece of furniture. So we also did a video on this piece. Uh, basic dresser, she found it at Goodwill. It was kind of beat up, wood color. She brought it home, we took it in the backyard, primed it with some white paint, uh, painted over with just some blue house paint, and it's, it works like new. And you know, I will say this about stuff at Goodwill, as, as you guys probably know, when you buy furniture now, you know, a lot of it, the quality can be questionable, right? When we get stuff from Ikea, we recognize, look, this stuff is from Ikea. It's great for shelving, but it's not exactly heavy duty. You would be surprised that, you know, Goodwill, when you get this old stuff, this stuff is solid. It is well made. These drawers are well made. They're smooth, right? So my point is a lot of this old Goodwill furniture, if you clean it up and paint it, it's a lot more sturdy than what you can buy new, especially for, for inexpensive furniture. 
did buy a lot of mirrors for the basement. So we've got uh, these, mirror, these mirrors here. We've got the ones in the craft room. So here we have a wall mirror. Um, it is very important, obviously, that you anchor these. I will be honest with you guys, this was not anchored originally when, we, when I put it up. Uh, but then when we bought Watson and brought him into our home, I realized with a small puppy running around, he might knock this down and cause some problems. So if you buy one of these and have small children or pets or clumsy relatives, make sure it is anchored. And the last set of mirrors that I'll show you that were splurged were uh, these exercise room mirrors. So again, the mirrors were a splurge, but you know, I think we all know why it's good to have mirrors um, sometimes in smaller spaces or darker spaces. So even though this basement is a good size, the mirrors help to make it look even bigger and also help to reflect uh, the light and you know give the, the uh, basement a little bit more light. So uh, again, a great area where we uh, splurged a little bit, but I think we got a lot of bang for our buck. So the next area we're gonna focus in on is the kitchen. Uh, splurge would be the beverage cooler. Now, normally it wouldn't be a splurge. I wanna give a shout out again to New Air for providing us with this cooler. If you didn't see the video where we talked about how great this cooler was, check it out. We've even got a, a coupon code on there that you can uh, use to get a great discount. We've really enjoyed having this. We've already had a couple of March Madness parties over here where the cooler came in really handy. So the cabinets are obviously, I think, going to be a steal, right? A now, steal? A steal, really? yeah, because again, look, when we say steal, that doesn't mean free. You know, these are roughly, if you average them, it's probably 200 bucks a cabinet. But when you look at what custom cabinets cost and what you would have to pay somebody to install cabinets, the fact that we were able to buy these from Home Depot already installed and we put them in ourselves, they do end up being a steal. Not free, right? But, you know, with cabinets, you're, you are going to have to spend a little bit of money. All right. Our next uh, splurge, I would consider this a splurge, would be uh, the microwave. Right, so rather than just have, you know, you can buy an inexpensive $100 microwave that sits on your counter, which I'm not gonna lie, I was tempted to do because I didn't <laughs> want to have a microwave, but somebody insisted that the microwave had to be hung. You did a great job, and this was actually your first time ever hanging and a yeah. microwave, so you did an amazing job, babe. And if, you, if you're wondering how hard is it to hang a microwave, um, I would say it's not difficult. It comes with a template, but you gotta, it takes some time. You gotta sit down and really look at that template and take your time. It's, it's a one person job, I did it myself. You didn't have to help, but it took some time. A mm. little bit of a splurge on the Samsung. What we like about this too, when you buy an under, you know, a cabinet microwave, it's got the uh, lighting. So it's got under cabinet lighting. And oh, cooling, that's great, yeah. And it's got three different settings. Now, this brings us to a, uh, a steel, right? This is nice under cabinet lighting, but obviously it didn't cover the whole countertop. So we purchased this battery powered puck lighting from Home Depot. They came three in a pack, and luckily we only needed three. Mm -hmm. Uh, uses three AAA batteries. So the downside of these is you do have to change the batteries and they don't work off of a central switch, right? The ones we have upstairs are just work off a central switch. You have to turn these on and off one at a time, but there's only three of them. The upside of these that you may not have thought of, and we've got a few LED lights like this in the house that are battery powered. Uh, when the power goes out, these still work. Oh yeah. That, that's one thing that's nice about these. You can still light up your house a little bit. So a great choice for under cabinet lighting that's very inexpensive. These were $10 for a pack of three. I would say the next area, I don't know, babe, would you say this is, I would say this is halfway between a steel and a splurge. Just one of these, it wasn't cheap, mm -hmm. but we did, we were able to cut costs looking at how we did it. When you were, now, do you mean the tile itself or this tile? The so, tile itself. Yeah, absolutely. When you think of how traditionally you would hang tile, you would have to buy the mastic, you would have to buy the uh, grout, yeah. the sponges, all of that stuff that you need to traditionally hang tile, that, that adds up depending on the type of uh, tile that you use and you know the, the size of the surface that you're gonna cover. And you have to factor in also your time. If you're putting in time, you know, mat, putting up the mastic and all the grout and stuff, that means you're taking away time from some other job I'm pretty sure you guys would have to do around the house. So this particular tile I think saves both time and money. And the reason it saves time and money is because this is peel and stick tile. Mm -hmm. So, and this is just a leftover piece I had. Mm -hmm. uh, Show bought, them the, the backing again. Yeah, so bought this from Home Depot. It's in the tile aisle. You peel this off mm -hmm. and this black surface that you see is very sticky. Yeah. So you basically stick it to the wall. Yeah. Um, 
I would say once you stick it on there, you wet it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and that gives you a little bit of flexibility. You can move it around for maybe half a minute, and then it's kind of stuck up right. there. Right. Um, but once it's up there, it is up there. Now, let me give you guys some advice for installing tile and buying tile, okay? When you buy tile, and I always get annoyed when you watch these shows and they don't ever buy enough tile and they got to go back to the store. When you buy tile, what you want to do, and this is just my advice, purchase it on a credit card. Measure your square footage. So you want to measure... Why a credit card? I'll tell you that in a minute. You want to measure the height times the width. That'll give you the square footage. Mm -hmm. Buy a lot more than what you need. I'm not saying buy twice as much, mm -hmm. but buy maybe 25, 35% more. Put it on the credit card. Keep the receipt. You buy too much, you take it back when you're done. You don't You don't want to come up short. You want to buy too much. Because what happens if you come up short? You, you have to stop your store, project yeah. and go back to the store. And then you risk them being all out. Selling out. And that inevitably will happen, right? Murphy's Law. So they sell out. So buy too much. Put it on the credit card. And what's nice about a credit card, too, or even your check card, if you save that, even if you lose the receipt, if you know what card you bought it on, they'll take it back. I think I spent about 250 maybe 300 bucks total on tile mm -hmm. but i ended up taking back about 75 dollars worth okay so it was nice you also want to buy extra because you're going to mess up a piece yeah right this whole slab is a piece that i was just experimenting on so the line is kind of crooked <laughs> right <laughs> um also when you're cutting when we're talking about cutting tile this is a splurge but i bought a tile saw mm -hmm. okay and i've talked about this in several videos i'm going to talk about it again I would not recommend buying the manual tile cutters unless you're doing a very small area, you're just very patient. Um, I've used one before, we used one at our first house. It's just hard to sit there and score a bunch of tile accurately and not make any mistakes and get a straight line and then break it and get it up on the wall. And it's time consuming. It's time consuming. This thing cuts like butter. I mean, I had never <laughs> used one before, but you put a little bit of water in the bottom here and it's got a diamond blade and it cuts through the tile like butter. When you cut the tile, Another tip I'll give you, you want to cut it face down. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it face up because the saw will cut into the face and chip it a little bit. So you yeah. want to cut it face down and you just run it across the saw and that's it. On my uh, left here, this is a definite splurge. This is the granite countertop, uh, Himalaya white. We had to go find this in the warehouse and find a fabricator to come in and put it in. It's, it's actually two splurges. You have the base countertop itself and then we added the splash guard, right? So this is optional when you buy a countertop. You don't have to get this piece. You'll usually see this in all bathrooms. You won't necessarily see a splash guard in all kitchens. Sometimes people will just tile all the way down, uh, but we wanted the splash guard. This piece, and you guys may remember if you <laughs> kind of followed our odyssey of doing this basement, very early on, before the basement was even finished, uh, my wife, who we talked about Goodwill, she is the Goodwill Whisperer. I am. <laughs> <laughs> went and found, uh, it was somewhat beat up. It was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, at uh, Goodwill. Mm -hmm. And let me give you guys a little bit of advice for the Goodwill shoppers. And I think you can attest to this, right, babe? You got to be patient at Goodwill. You got to kind of stalk goodwill a little bit. Don't right, you have to, to go to more than one. Yeah, don't expect to go out on the first day and find something. So she found this. We did what we always do. We repainted it. Our contract actually added a few pieces on here. And then we got lucky and Ikea sold uh, pre-sized laminate countertops. So we found this. We did a measurement, found this countertop uh, online at Ikea. Saw it was in stock. It was the perfect size. We didn't have to cut it. I uh, basically used some construction adhesive and glued it right down to the top. And we had just enough lip over here to kind of create a bar with the bar stools. So this was uh, truly a labor of love. We're very proud of this piece because we made it. So this is our steel and this is our splurge. But we feel like these are, these are very complementary to one another. So you got your splurge and you got your steel. So guys, we really wanted this to obviously, obviously be a fully functioning kitchen. So mm -hmm. you'll notice there's no counter, there's no uh, stove top. Yeah. And we thought about putting in like a stove top, but we wanted to do something fun. This is where we have parties and entertain. Right. And then also, what, are we really going to be down no. here cooking like full? I know I'm not going to be out here cooking full meals. Yeah, we're not going to have pots and pans down here. No, we're, we're not. Just, <laughs> we're not going to do all that. So you came up with this really fun idea of having the uh, hot dog warmer yeah. down here. 
yeah it worked great it works great we've already used it i actually need to clean it right now but um yeah so this great is a splurge. purchase yeah this is a splurge <laughs> off of uh amazon another thing that was a splurge from amazon before i forget if we look right down here below the hot dog maker mm -hmm. you guys may have seen this in the previous video the slide out trash cans oh yeah so the hidden trash cans that slide out i say it was a splurge but it was really affordable mm -hmm. it was a splurge in the sense that it was a little bit more expensive than just buying a standard plastic receptacle right so mm -hmm. a little bit more money but it's nice because it hides it and it clears out this floor area here another really quick um steal this little doohickey right here from five below so you know now everybody has uh phone devices, devices that have lightning or USB connectors. So this is a little charger port that I found at Five Below, and it's got the uh, USB kind of charge ports in here as well as the receptacle that plugs in. Pop your phone right up there, and works great. Now I did see, and I didn't do this, I thought about doing it. You can actually buy uh, these plugs here that are built in with the USBs in them. They <laughs> actually sell those now. I started to do that, but mm -hmm. I didn't feel like changing these out, so I just bought this little piece, and obviously, five bucks from five below. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is a couple of gadgets. One of them is a really big gadget. Uh, this higher refrigerator, I would say was a splurge, right? So down here in the basement, we didn't want to get a big full size refrigerator, right? Just because it's a basement. You don't think this is full size? No, this is not quite full size. It's a little bit narrower than a standard size refrigerator, which again, we're not gonna be down here doing hardcore cooking and chefery, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But it, it is a splurge from the perspective that the, with a lot of the smaller refrigerators, you just kind of have the plain top and bottom. Mm -hmm. You just kind of have the two drawers. And you, I know we're real big on you wanted something a little bit more modern. Yeah, looking. something a little bit more sleek. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one has... The stainless steel and the digital display. Yeah, really nice features on yeah. it. Got a fingerprint. Somebody's going to walk around here. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to talk about is neither a splurge nor a steal. It's a necessity. Right. So if you've been watching the news as of late, you've probably seen a story where there was a tragic uh, news story of a family of four. They had gone on vacation and mm -hmm. rented a condo in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And apparently it looks like there may have been some type of gas leak and they all tragically ended up passing away yeah. uh, in that condo. All four of them passed away, uh, mother, dad, brother, and sister. Mm -hmm. And ironically, um, a couple of months ago, I needed to replace one of our smoke detectors um, and while I was in Home Depot, which it seems like where I live these days, right. I saw they have these plug-in CO2 detectors. So this is a CO2 detector that you plug into any wall outlet and it detects CO2. Now, obviously you can still get them, you know, in the standard smoke detectors that you have up in the ceiling. Let's see, let's hold it still so they can see. Yeah. So that's the... Kitty. And this was, I want to say 22 bucks. Okay. What's nice about it though, is it just plugs into an outlet and you can take it with you. Oh, right? so if you're on vacation yes. or traveling, this just... Yeah, and with Airbnb, we're, more, we're renting more condos and apartments, and so we don't know the condition of how the gas lines are as opposed to a hotel that might be getting regularly inspected. Mm -hmm. So something like this that you can take with you is, is great to have. Um, I actually bought it for the basement because our water heater is in this door behind me. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that that might have been what was leaking in that condo incident was the water heater. So I've, I've got this plugged into the storage room behind me where the water heater is to make sure that there are no gas leaks. Thanks for that, babe. You also want to make sure that you're off the subject. You want to make sure that your water heater is properly vented. So you should have vents that let gas out where your water heater is installed. All right, folks. So let's go into the bathroom next. So one quick thing i want to show you in the bathroom you see we have a variety of bathroom furniture we've got uh, these cabinets on the upper and lower parts of the bathroom we've got this sink here another cabinet and so these were all kind of separate pieces they all had polished silver handles and pulls um, but they were all slightly different so we upgraded on the pools we went to again home depot seems like we've only been going to home depot here lately sorry Lowe's. Uh, and bought these kind of upgraded blinged out pools uh, and obviously we wanted to make sure they were the same for every piece of furniture so that is a really you know quick and simple and easy thing you can do to change the look of you know a piece of furniture a drawer a cabinet um, to really change that look and make it you know look a little bit more upgraded all right i think we are on our last room here the exercise room and that's squealing you here 
was a splurge. You gonna put it on Watson over there who was busy eating one of your shoes? <laughs> Watson, say hi to the camera. I didn't say I didn't say come over here, dude. That's now his shoe. That is now. <laughs> Okay, so a few different things to talk about in this room, and we're just gonna kind of work our way around. If we go to my right here, we've talked about designing your own artwork. So, you know, we bought the mirrors, there are other few pieces of wall art that we did pay some money for, but you may recall we did a video on our build out of this exercise room. We created these ourselves. We bought the canvas from an art supply store, I think it was Michael's, mm -hmm. uh, black spray paint. Uh, templates and we just had some leftover white house paint so we just used the letter stencils painted it in and this is a great find and again not free but to find pictures that large in a store that would work in a gym you probably I would not I would say two hundred three hundred dollars a picture or a frame is not unheard of for something of that size another steel and one example I'm sitting on benches and exercise equipment uh, this bench this large piece of uh, multifunction equipment, uh, those barbells over there, we either got from a uh, used sporting goods store or using the Let Go app, right? And this is not a sponsored video, but if you watched our video on how we did this gym, we actually got this through the Let Go app. And the Let Go app, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of similar to like an online Craigslist, but it's, it's based on an app. You get reviews and ratings. You can message through the app. Uh, and so I'm a big fan of buying used sports equipment for some use cases, for some situations, not all situations. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think stuff like this, a bench, barbells, dumbbells, things that don't have motors right. and, and moving parts that have to be serviced, I think it's totally fine to get that pre-owned. In fact, if it's scratched up or something, and these were in great conditions, we didn't have to paint them. But even if they're scratched up, you can easily paint something like this. Now, the flip side of that, we did splurge on uh, the mechanical electrical equipment. So our treadmill, our elliptical, our bike, we went out and bought those new. I would not recommend getting pre-owned equipment that's an elliptical or a treadmill unless it is dirt cheap, right? <laughs> and here's why, especially with a treadmill. Treadmills, the motors, and the belts wear out. So I would not pay more than $100, a couple of hundred dollars for a used treadmill. Elliptical or bike, you might have a little bit of better luck, but just be wary of buying used equipment like that. Again, if somebody's selling it dirt cheap, or you got a buddy that just wants to get rid of it and they're going to give it to you, you know, damn near for free, then hey, by all means. But if you're not going to do that, get it new. Now, I will say we got these from Amazon, they were a great deal, and Amazon actually delivered it almost the next day. It wasn't the next day, it was like within two days. All right, y'all, so the Property Brother is probably going to take a break now that we've done no! You promised. You said, look, you have anything else for me to do? Mm -hmm. You said there was a break. We're taking a summer break. Not to say that we won't have more videos. Obviously, we're going to have more videos, but uh, home makeover, uh, crafty stuff. That you're you're hanging up your tool belt. I see yeah, you're not even gonna wearing your tool belt. You're going to hang up your clipboard. I'm hanging it up. I'm, I'm, I'm done, y'all. And, and you promised, right? Okay. Y'all hold her to it. Okay. No more projects.